Many junior DevOps engineers need clarification on the concept of CI-CD. This video discusses the concept, its purposes, and a few examples. My name is Ahmed Al-Fakharani, and this is my channel. CI stands for Continuous Integration. The sole purpose of CI is to give developers rapid feedback about their code quality concerning the rest of the project. Once you push some changes to the Git repository or SVN or whatever you prefer, and you want to merge it to the main branch, you raise a PR, which is short for a pull request. The PR triggers the CI pipeline, compiles and builds the code if applicable, and performs automated tests against it. Tests can be as straightforward or as complex as you want them to be. For example, unit tests, code coverage, etc. You're examining whether your code integrates well with the application or not. If tests pass, the code can be merged into the main branch, usually with another team member's approval. Ideally, the CI pipeline should prepare an artifact and push it to an artifactory. This artifact can be as simple as a zip file containing the code files in a compressed form or as complex as it needs to be. For example, an exe file, a jar archive, a Ruby jam, a Helm package, etc. The artifactory is a particular type of storage that allows versioning. For example, AWS, S3, ECR, Nexus, and others. Continuous delivery ensures that code integrates well with the application and it's deployable to an environment that is as close as possible to production. If the application follows the microservices architecture, the CD pipeline performs tests against the entire system like all the APIs like end-to-end -end tests and user acceptance tests and maybe stress testing, performance testing, and other types of tests. It's important to note here that CD pulls the artifact from the artifactory and delivers it to one or more environments. The artifact remains the same in all the stages of CD since it is the one which all tests were done against. When it comes to delivering the artifact to production, it must be done manually due to the apparent criticality. Someone selects which artifact version can be released to production and clicks a button that triggers the same CD process, but against the live environment. CD involves working with deployment, which ranges from just uploading files to FTP or rsync to using configuration management tools like Ansible or AWS SSL. If the environment is containerized, we'd work with kubectl or Helm and customize. Environments can also be created and destroyed on the fly using IAC tool like Terraform and Packer. In more advanced and mature scenarios, deployment to production is also automated, which is referred to as continuous deployment. However, this requires a whole suite of thorough tests to guarantee code and application quality in production. QA involves functional testing, performance, and stress testing, among others. Regarding deployment, CD should also feature the ability to roll back failed deployments. So, this covers the theoretical part of the topic. Let's head to our lab. We will use GitLab CI as our platform. However, after making the appropriate modifications, the same steps can be applied to any CI CD platform like GitHub Actions, Circle CI, and others. We created a simple Node.js web application that displays Hello World to visitors. Let's have a look at how this application is built. We have an index.js file that contains the code for welcoming the user. We also have a package.json file where we instruct Node.js on how to start our application. Any software package needs to be tested, so we are using Mocha, one of several JavaScript testing frameworks available to run tests against the code before shipping it. The test command is specified here. The test itself lives in a file called test.js under the test directory. Testing can be as easy or as complex as you want it to be. As we mentioned before, we can implement different types of quality assurance scenarios. But for the sake of simplicity, we are just ensuring that when the application runs, it will display hello world to the visitor precisely this way. Once we run successful tests, we must package our code in a version artifact that we can refer to later. Packaging highly relies on how you want to deploy your application. For example, if you want to use native JavaScript tools, you can depend on NPM for packaging, pushing, pulling, and even deploying the application to your target environments. But for this lab, we will package our code in a Docker image. This will be our artifact. So we have a Docker file that builds this image from the existing files. As you can see, it sets the working directory, copies the necessary files, and runs npm install, which is needed for downloading any dependent modules. Finally, it sets the entry point to npm start, which starts the web application server. Before going any further, let's test the application's appearance without packaging or running any pipeline, just test it on our local machine. So in the terminal, we can just run npm install to download any dependent modules. Then we can run npm start, like Docker would do when it packages the software. The application is now running. We can navigate to the browser, 
to localhost column 3000 where the application listens. And we have our expected output. What about running the tests locally? We can do that by running npm test. As you can see, all tests are passing. Once the application is packaged into a Docker image, it will be pushed to a registry. This acts as our artifactory where we store our virgin artifacts. There are many Docker image registries available, the most well known of which is Docker Hub. However, for this lab, we will use GitLab's container registry to have all our components in the same place. Docker images can be deployed directly to a virtual machine or even a bare metal one. It can be also deployed to a Docker Compose stack or a container orchestration system like Docker Swarm, AWS Elastic Container Service, ECS for short, in addition to countless other options. In this video, we opted to use Kubernetes as our deployment platform. We are going to use AWS Elastic Kubernetes Service or EKS, but the same procedure can be applied to any Kubernetes cluster that GitLab can access. When it comes to Kubernetes, again, there are several application deployment methods. For example, we can use kubectl, combine it with customize, or use Helm. In this lab, we will use Helm. We already have a Helm chart that serves the Docker image of our application. We can have a quick look at its contents. So we have a deployment, we have a service, these are standard components. In the values file, we point to the GitLab registry where our Docker image is pushed. Now, let's look at our project in the GitLab repository. In the settings, CI CD, we can view the variables that our CI CD pipeline can access. Variables are powerful since they can give CI CD access to external resources as needed in addition to other use cases. In our scenario, we are supplying the AWS credentials of a user with access to the EKS cluster. We are not going to discuss the internals of AWS and how to create an IAM role to find grain resource access, but you just need to know that this user has the necessary permissions to deploy applications to EKS. Our Helm chart is stored in GitLab's package registry. Again, we are not short of options regarding the Helm chart registries. Yet again, we decided to use GitLab's offering for consistency. Now, let's review the main feature of this video, the CI-CD pipeline. In GitLab, we can create a pipeline by adding a file called .gitlab-ci.yml and placing it in the repository's root. Let's study the contents of this file in some detail. First, we have an image that will be used throughout the pipeline. With GitLab CI and many other CI CD pipelines today, we can use Docker images to build the necessary environments to test, build, and deploy our artifacts. Next, we define the stages that our pipeline goes through. Test, build, deliver, and deploy. We can define global variables as well. Variables defined in this scope are accessible by all other jobs. So we can define the container image, which is how we want to store our Docker image. GitLab CI provides many built-in environment variables that we can use. The CI registry image defines the GitLab image registry to which the Docker image is pushed. In our case, this resolves to registry.gitlab.com slash my username slash the project name. The CI commit short SHA or SHA contains the first eight characters of the commit SHA that triggered the pipeline. We use the commit SHA or hash as a unique identifier for the image that can be traced back to the git commit that created it. We have everything needed to start creating the jobs running the pipeline, so let's do that. The first stage we have is the testing phase, where we ensure that the application behaves as we expect it to. Using a shell script, we can just run npm install and npm test the same way we did on the terminal a few moments ago. Notice that we are running this inside a node container image. That's why we have access to Node.js tools like npm. If the tests pass, we can move to the second step. Otherwise, the pipeline fails and the developer is notified over email, Slack, or other communication channels that the tests did not pass and thus the code needs to be fixed. The next stage is the build one where we construct the artifact. We are switching the image here since the node one does not contain Docker. We could still have node and install Docker as part of the job code, but that will increase the pipeline's runtime and add an extra layer of complexity. Switching the image is more efficient. Next, we have the services available to this job. In GitLab CI, we can use 
services to avail common job environments. For example, most applications today require a back-end database, a cache server, or both to function and perform tests properly. Services allow us to create the necessary assisting components like a, for example, a messaging queue, like Kafka, for example. Again, we use Docker images for this. In our specific case, we want to be able to build Docker images from within the pipeline. This means that we need the Docker runtime. Since we will access the Docker runtime from a Docker container, the service is called Docker in Docker or DIND for short. A Docker image provides this functionality and it is called Docker. You may be asking now, if we already have the Docker image, why do we need the Docker service? When we say Docker, we could be referring to the client side where we have the Docker command line tool that we can use to build, push, pull, tag, and so on. We could also be referring to the runtime environment, the server side part that handles the actual workings. For Docker to work, we need a client side provided by the Docker image that contains the Docker command binary. And we also need the server side or the backend, which Docker in Docker service provides. Now we can define what Docker would do. We need to build and push the image. So we can log into the registry using the docker login subcommand. Then we build and push the image. We also have an exciting part. We mentioned earlier that we are tracking the artifacts we store, aka our docker images using the commit SHA, right? However, the SHA string is not memorable and doesn't provide proper versioning. We want to use something like, for example, 1.0.0 or 5.3.2 to refer to our artifacts and our releases. We can also rely on semantic versioning to identify major and minor upgrades to our clients. Commit SHAs do not provide that. To do that, while still maintaining our SHA strings as unique identifiers, we use git tags. In git, a tag is just a pointer to a branch or a comment. If we want to release a new version of our application, for example, we can tag a specific comment with the version we desire. Consequently, we also want to tag our Docker image with this git tag to have a version image. So here we have an if condition that checks whether the git commit that triggered the pipeline is a tag by examining the existence of the GitLab CI commit tag. If this variable is there, we have a tag and we can use it if we want to. So we can give the Docker image a second tag, which is the version. This way, we have two tags for this image, the commit SHA or hash and the version, which we get from the tag. We will see that in a few moments when we run the pipeline. Now, our next job is the delivery one. We want to ensure that our artifact can be delivered to a pre-production environment. By pre-production here, we are referring to all non-production environments, for example, testing, QA, user acceptance, staging, etc. The idea here is to confirm that our artifact, in our case, the Docker image, is deployable to an environment that is as close as possible to production. In this lab, we are using AWS EKS cluster, as mentioned. There are two namespaces on this cluster, staging and production. In our scenario, testing is done on the same cluster that hosts production. Environments are isolated by being placed in different namespaces. While this setup works, and actually several organizations follow it, production workloads, in my opinion, should always be placed on their dedicated cluster. A non-production cluster could have several environments in namespaces, but not production. All right, so our delivery job will use a Docker image that has Helm installed. We can use the Alpine one. The latest version at this time is 3.12.3. .3. An important thing to notice here is that since we are connecting to EKS, we need the AWS command line tool installed. This is mandatory to authenticate the user to the cluster since we must contact the AWS API. Since the Alpine Helm chart does not ship with AWS, we must install the tool manually. Now, we have a problem here. The Helm Docker image that we are using here has Helm, like the Helm binary command as its entry point. This means that we cannot run shell commands like apk install or pip because the shell is unavailable. There are two solutions to this issue. Either to bake our own image that contains Helm, AWS, and any other deployment tools that we might need, then we can use this image instead of the Alpine Helm one. Or the other option is to modify the entry point of this image so that we can invoke the shell. GitLab CI allows us to set the entry point key to an empty array. This way we have access to the shell and we can run any command that the shell accepts inside the container. Best practices entail that we place any preparation code in the before script part of the job. As the name suggests, code defined in the before script part is always executed before the main script runs. This makes it an ideal place to install any prerequisites. Here, we want the AWS command line tool, so we start by installing curl, python3, and pip. Then, we use pip to install the AWS command line tool. 
Finally, we use Helm, which is already available in the image to log in to the GitLab registry. Since we are running the pipeline in the same project where the Helm chart is stored, we can use the built-in CI job token that GitLab provides. This token enables the pipeline to access the package registry without providing our user credentials. The username here is called gitlab-ci-token, and this is a service account. Now, let's move to the script itself. We start with adding the repository where the chart is stored using the helm repo add command. This URL is how we can reach the helm chart stored in GitLab's package registry. It requires the project ID, which we could have hard-coded, but a better approach is to use GitLab's built-in CI project ID. The channel name is stable. We could use a different channel name if you want to, depending on which one you chose when you uploaded the Helm chart. Helm and any Kubernetes deployment tools need a valid kubeconfig file that points to the cluster. We could have hard-coded the kubeconfig file as a GitLab variable and used it here. But a better approach is to use the AWS CLI command, since we already have it in the image, to create the kubeconfig file on the fly. This leaves us with one less variable to maintain. Since the pipeline could be triggered by a regular commit or one containing a tag, we must cater to both scenarios. So we check for the existence of a tag. If we have one, we want to use it as our image tag. So we run helm upgrade hyphen hyphen install. This way, helm will install the chart if it needs to be added to the cluster or updated otherwise. The critical point here is which image tag it will use. If the pipeline was triggered by a commit that does not include a tag, then the image tag becomes the SHA, or the hash of the commit. Otherwise, we use the virgin tag to pull the image. Notice also that we use the hyphen hyphen set command line option to set the input values dynamically. If all this Helm stuff seems cryptic to you, you can watch my Helm mini course on YouTube, giving you a gentle introduction to the topic. Alternatively, if you want more in-depth Helm knowledge and you want to use it like a real pro, you should check my entire course on Udemy. I will provide a link to the course in the description, including a discount coupon. Now let's get back to our topic. We don't want to deploy every new Docker image to the staging environment. We should have a stable image link to the main branch. Developers can create as many branches as they want to. They can add features, fix bugs, and make all necessary changes to the code. When done, they raise a pull request or a merge request in GitLab's terminology, requesting their code changes to be merged to the main branch. The code is peer-reviewed, and when approved, it is merged. When that happens, a new image should be deployed to the staging environment since this is the one running on the main branch and is a possible candidate to be deployed to production. Accordingly, we want this task to run only if the commit is done to the main branch or if a tag is pushed. Our final job in this pipeline is the production deployment. This is where we install and update the Docker image that serves our clients. The job is typical of the one that delivers to the staging environment, except that we don't want it to be automated. We want to control when to deploy to production and which version will be deployed. For that reason, we configure this job to be run manually on demand. We will also create a new variable only for this job called the image version. The default value of this variable is the commit hash, but this only happens if we don't specify a value when running the pipeline. This image holds the version that we want to deploy to production. We will see how this works in a few moments. So this completes our pipeline code. Let's run it. So in our GitLab console, we go to the pipelines page and we run the pipeline. Ideally, it should run when a commit or tag is pushed, but we just want to see how it works. The pipeline takes a few minutes, so I will speed up the video to save time. Once it is finished, we should have a new Docker image pushed to the container registry. Let's check. Indeed, we have our image pushed. If we look at the tag, it conforms to the commit hash of the last commit in this repo. So now we know that the CI part of the pipeline is done. The tests were run and the artifact was pushed to the artifactory. Let's check the CD part. We check the Helm charts deployed to the cluster in the terminal by running Helm list hyphen end staging since we delivered to the staging namespace. As you can see, we have the Helm chart deployed. If we list the available pods in the namespace, we can see that we have our application pod. Let's check the application itself by issuing a port forward command. We want to access the container from our local browser on port 3000. We have our message, which means that the application was successfully delivered to the staging environment. Now, let's change our application and create our next release. So we can just modify the index.js file and change the welcome message. 
for our tests to pass, we must also modify the test.js file that it expects a new message, not the old one. Now let's commit and push our changes to the repository. Ideally, we should create a branch and ask our colleagues to review and approve it before merging it to the main branch. But since we are the only users here, we will directly push to the main branch. Moving to the pipeline page, we see that the jobs have started. Again, I'll just speed the video to save time. Now we can view what we have on the staging environment. If we list the available Helm charts, we will see that we have a new revision, which means that this chart has been upgraded. Let's rerun our port forward command with a new pod. If we open the browser and refresh the page, we will see the new message displayed. Now, assuming that after we reviewed our application and its changes, we decided to ship the version that displays this message to our users. We want this version to be 1.0.0 and we want it to run on production. To arrive at this result, we do the following. First, we tag our current commit, which displays the message we want, 1.0.0. Then we push the tag. Notice that we are not pushing a new commit to the repository. Instead, we are pushing a tag that points to a commit. Immediately, our pipeline is triggered. Let's wait for it to finish. Now, if we go to the container registry, we will see a new image tag created with the intended version 1.0.0. The pipeline has prepared and pushed the image with our intended code. It has been tested tagged and pushed to the registry. Now we want to ship this version to production. So we click on the last step in the pipeline, which manually deploys to production. The job is run manually, allowing us to supply arbitrary variables. In our case, we want to specify the image version 1.0.0. Then we can run the job. Once it is done, we can go to the terminal and we can list the available Helm charts only this time on the production namespace. And we have our chart deployed. Let's list the pods that we have. And let's ensure that we have the correct image tag by describing the pod. As you can see, the deployed image is tagged 1.0.0. So, in this video, we discussed the concepts of continuous integration and continuous delivery and deployment. We also created a simple lab with a simplistic CI CD pipeline using GitLab as the build platform and AWS EKS as the deployment one. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel to be notified of the latest content as soon as it gets published. My name is Ahmed Al Fakharani. Thanks for watching.